do-it-yourself postman. There was another parcel of books for Miss Hubbard on Tuesday morning. I don't know how you find the time to read all these books, said Pat. <laughs> Bless you, Pat, said Miss Hubbard. I don't get them all read. Wish I could. But there's always time for a good book. I love reading. Always have. You should try it, Pat. There's nothing like it. Oh, I do, said Pat. But I get mine from the mobile library. Then you won't have my problem, said Miss Hubbard. What's that? said Pat. Finding somewhere to put them. There were books everywhere in Miss Hubbard's house. There were collections of books in the kitchen. There were stacks of books in the sitting room. There were bundles of books in the bedroom. There were piles of books on the stairs. You'll be falling over these, said Pat. There were books even in the bathroom and the toilet. There were books under every chair, and you usually had to move a handful of books before you could sit down. And, of course, there were bookcases full of books. I see what you mean, said Pat. I can't fit any more bookcases in, said Miss Hubbard. Not one. There wouldn't be room for me if I did. Tell you what, said Pat. Cup of tea, said Miss Hubbard. Thanks, said Pat. I was going to say, Biscuit? said Miss Hubbard. Thanks, said Pat. I was going to say, he went on, but Miss Hubbard was busy unwrapping her parcel. Oh, what a lovely book, she cried. All about Austrian churches. I'm going there for my holidays next year. Just look at that lovely painting of the Virgin Mary. We could do with one like that in Greendale Church, said Pat. Uh, what were you saying, Pat, about my books, said Miss Hubbard. Uh, um, said Pat, I've gone and forgotten. Oh, yes, I know what it was. You could have some built-in shelves. They wouldn't take up so much room as bookcases, and they could go right up to the ceiling in those alcoves. You have lots of alcoves. Just put shelves across. There'd be plenty of room for your books then. Sounds a super idea. I always thought those alcoves were a nuisance. Do you think I could do it myself? said Miss Hubbard. I'll give you a hand, said Pat. I'll come and measure up tonight, and we can ask Sam to bring the wood and screws from Pencaster in his van. Pat cycled round to Miss Hubbard's cottage after tea, with Jess sitting in the basket, with the roll-up steel ruler, a pencil, a notebook, and the catalogue from the do-it-yourself shop in Pencaster. Before Pat could measure the alcoves, Miss Hubbard had to make a space, as they were already full of high piles and heaps of books. If I move the sitting room books into the kitchen, and the bedroom books into the toilet, then we should be able to manage, said Miss Hubbard. But then they found that they couldn't get into the kitchen to make a cup of tea, and no one could get into the toilet, so they had to move everything round again. And Pat got trapped upstairs by a wall of books that had cascaded down the stairs and had to shout for Miss Hubbard to come and rescue him. What a business it was. There was more moving than measuring, and Pat found that every alcove was a different size. When he tapped at the wall to see if it was solid enough to take the screws for the shelves, he found one wall was hollow, and when Miss Hubbard pulled the wallpaper off they found a cupboard that had been covered up and hidden years ago. It's my old mother's herb cupboard, said Miss Hubbard. I wondered where it had got to. Now that will be useful for my winemaking things. Well done, Pat. In the end, they managed to get all the alcoves measured. Your books are in a right old muddle now, said Pat. Never mind, said Miss Hubbard. I've been meaning to sort them out for years. I'll leave them where they are until the new shelves are up. Then I'll have a big book sort. The next day, Pat gave his notebook to Sam with all the measurements in it. Sam called in at the do-it-yourself shop in Pencaster on Thursday and picked the wood and had it all cut to the sizes in Pat's notebook. 
Then he delivered it to Miss Hubbard, along with her potatoes, carrots, and cucumber. I hope they're all the correct size, said Miss Hubbard. Well, potatoes only come in large and small, new and old, said Sam, and I don't usually measure the carrots and cucumbers. The wood, you silly man, said Miss Hubbard. You know quite well what I mean. It should be all right, said Sam, smiling. They have a special machine that cuts it correct to one millimeter. Bother millimeters, said Miss Hubbard. I keep to good old English inches. I'm sure it'll be okay, said Sam, and he stacked the wood in the hall amongst the piles of books.